Welcome back. Testing one, two, three. I'm having a little bit of technical issues here, but it sounds like you can hear me now. We can hear you. Thank you very much. So I'm gonna walk you through the changes and considerations in the school buying cycle. We have um, long studied the school buying cycle, but there are many things that are predictable about it, but there are some things that are changing and we want you to be aware of that. So what we're gonna cover is we're gonna cover the calendar. We're gonna identify the stages. We're gonna talk about messaging and some details in the staging. And we're gonna talk about some considerations for today's environment. The calendar is broken into three sections. The first section is goal setting and needs assessment, which runs from May through October in a typical year. Information gathering and research, which runs through from November through April and the all important purchasing decisions months of April and May. We're gonna cover somehow some, how some of those are different now, but how largely they're remaining the same. The first section is goal setting and needs assessment. The important thing here is districts and schools are figuring out what goals they need to set, what goals they may not have met previously, and what they need to, what they need to reach those goals. They're evaluating existing programs, they're conducting needs assessments, and any shortcomings that need to be addressed. Principals and decision makers are gathering input to prepare their budget for the coming year. New needs in this environment have been realized every single week. It's more important now consulting frontline staff on what did not work and what their needs are has become a daily message, a message to school leaders and superintendents and buying organizations. Important things to remember during this stage is what my messaging should be and how I can deliver it. The important thing is how you can meet the goals they may have identified. Goals are important. Highlight value during this time. Identify help you, how you help improve reading in the classroom using, be specific and clear, and don't be afraid to be hyper-focused on your product, on the goals you meet, on the standards you might be applied to. Some key tools in this part of the schedule would be use blogs, social media posts, Email campaigns and focused on informing. This is not a buy now, buy now, buy now message. It is all about how you can support the goals that they need to meet. Or the goals that they may not, they may have fallen short of. Again, typically this is June through October. But again, as we had said before, we are finding out about new needs every single week of the classroom, of the, of the school calendar this year. The second section of the calendar is information gathering and research. Goal setting and needs assessment are a team effort that involves staff at all levels. Principals are gathering information from the experts on their staff. Principals have not been experts on things like remote learning. They have not been experts on making technology work. Every educator is now a distance learning scientist. Whether they want to or not, they have to be. So principals are gathering input from, I'll call it the committee. Decision makers are gathering from a broader set of input than they have ever done before. The person who was maybe the technology expert who only got involved in a classroom or in a school decision, in school decisions mildly in the past is deeply involved and in attending meetings that they have never been in before. So it's important to go broad and understand who the potential input providers are. You can see here that recommendation by educators is even more important, is an even more important factor in purchasing than research is. Ease of use will always be. These are helpful ideas to deliver in your messaging. If you can, if you can highlight how other teachers are using your service or product to meet goals, that's important. Ease of use is always, always, always Top of mind though. What activities can you conduct during the information gathering and research section of the calendar? This is when they have a lot of information and they're looking for, again, precise information so they can narrow the vendors to a select few. They may be researching you without you knowing it. You need to present 
and make available and highlight your best content. You always wanna also encourage sampling and trial. You wanna make sure that they can get a hold of your value easily. And you wanna make sure you're getting to the broadest audience possible. If you have a complicated trial process, reconsider that. If you don't have a sampling process, reconsider that. Some of the activities you want to do or drive, act, drive traffic to your educational resource with social and email. Webinars, samples, and demos, free downloads, anything that makes it easy for, easy for them to get a hold of you. Ease of use applies in the, gathering, in the information gathering stage too. If I can't get your information easily, then that's a challenge. One of the ways that you can in, encourage them to narrow you down is third-party endorsement. Content on We Are Teachers gets read broad and wide by members who are involved in decision-making processes. And it's important to consider those as well as your own content. The third section um, is when typically purchasing decisions are made. This is typically April, May, June, with a lot of purchase orders following on a July 1 calendar, um, unless now, it's important here. Most districts have decided what they want to purchase by April or May. So then they just go through the process and they wait for July 1 to buy. However, you may need an emergency need. So an example of this is I was in a meeting where our school principal identified that district-wide, they're going to need 900 cameras to ensure that distance learning is going to be be effective and comprehensive. They're probably not gonna wait till July to purchase that because there's a purchase, there's an install. That is an emergency need. However, not everything will follow an emergency need purchasing practice. Schools will follow a traditional schedule. They do have funding, but it has not been spent. We heard in one of the earlier sessions how the CARES funding is deployed and how we track that and we're aware of that. And we have information that indicates that not a lot of the CARES funding has been spent yet. That is because it's following into a traditional calendar. They're not all of a sudden going to start purchasing new things without going through the same rigor that they had done in the past. Implementation and training is critical. Schools have very, we heard the word earlier too. Schools have very real change fatigue right now. So anything that they can put into their normal calendar, they're gonna to seek to do that. So the encouraging thing is you haven't missed a lot, but you might be missing it if you're not active right now. Some of the messaging, again, demos, free trial push via email, drive them to customer success stories, case studies with social and email, Communicate and highlight your implementation and training plans. Exhibit community contents endorsed by others. There is that third party endorsement. Leading into purchasing decisions is a key time to remind them the needs you met, the goals they set, and how you satisfy those goals. Implementation, implementation, implementation. You need to be able to support the sale and convince them that you're an easy decision to make. Focus on outcomes. You can provide and remind buyers of your value proposition, again, the needs they establish, the goals they established, the parameters you meet, the goals you support, and why they got there in the first place. These are some tips that we have picked up during, this, during the pandemic by our com communications with teachers. They have additional funding. Third 3.5 billion plus went to education and CARES funding. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not spent yet. So there's still a lot of opportunity out there. Everyone on the staff has an opinion on new. Everyone, teachers are gonna be hyper vigilant about changes and they're gonna do their own research and they wanna be able to provide input about things that they do want and that they don't want. It used to be that it was just a few people, maybe a select few who used to be on a task force or a committee that provided input and did demonstrations and sampled, but now more and more involved, they understand clearly everybody's life has been upended 
and they need to, they do understand their need to be involved in what's coming next. Their time, the time is less available in the past. So your messaging needs to be concise and clear. And we heard Deneen say earlier, completely honest and transparent. They don't have a lot of time for marketing messaging. It needs to be about their goals and how you support that. However, change is unsettling some old practices, but not all. The normal things that they buy are gonna follow a normal schedule. The part of their budget that is going to be spent on emergency needs is actually a pretty significant portion of their budget. I don't have an exact estimate, but imagine the emergency needs. It might be, you know, those cameras that, my, that my school is gonna buy, my school district is gonna buy, that doesn't amount to even 5% of their budget. A couple of tips and takeaways. Everybody's day has had change in the education space. That may be good for providers who are new, who want to expand and, unless, and, and grow your market share with good case studies and experience and knowledge, things are unsettled. So you may be able to grow your footprint or take hold where you haven't in the past. Don't be worried about not moving fast enough. Move now. A lot of the old procedure will remain consistent for most purchases. Again, re-emphasizing that time constraints mean your targeting and messaging must be more precise than ever. Decisions will be heavily influenced and effectively made by a broad group of staff. The teacher who may not have been involved at all in the past may have significant issues with certain technologies, service, products, educational approaches that may or may not work. And they're learning every day what is working and what is not working. You can bet for sure that come the spring, the buying is gonna be very heavy. The buying is heavy now as well for emergency needs, but that's the smaller part of the budget. When we get into the spring, or actually right now, they're deciding what is not working and what they need to do to improve. So now is the time to message about your value and how you meet the needs that they are uncovering. I went through that a little fast. Um, we want to be time conscious. I want to thank everybody. And as we did mention, the slides for the entire webinar will be distributed. And Maggie? Thank you so much, Chris. Um, this was a wonderful overview and takeaways today. Um, that concludes our last session. Um, thank you for joining us. This event was recorded and we will be sharing the content um, that was presented. Do you have any closing remarks that you'd like to share, Chris? Sure, sure. Educators are ideal consumers, active purchase and a powerful community of influencers. Schools at the heart of many communities providing learning, lunches, safety, daily structure, as well as helping to build up the next generation. As we saw in one slide earlier, one in four Americans attends a K-12 K school on a regular basis. Although the education landscape is changing and adapting daily, or maybe because it is, it is important to stay in touch with your customers and prospects regularly and all year long. How we teach and learn today could pivot with short notice, and so the needs of this community could change. MDR is here to support you in new and successful ways as you develop your outreach campaigns over the days, weeks, and months to come, tracking school learning models, educator needs, funding, and digital behavior. We thrive on and are inspired by data because anything else is guesswork. Customers come to us because they want to know more about the education community, persuade educators, grow their business, and build lasting relationships. Rich data is the key. We don't just know how educators behave. We're skilled in prompting responses in clicks, likes, loyalties, and opens. If you're looking for a partner that knows the educational landscape and can give you the know-how to engage with teachers, parents, and kids where they learn, where they live, our team is here for you. We would enjoy continuing the conversation we started over email and throughout this afternoon. To learn more about you and your organization, business goals, challenges, and what we've learned in education and how you support schools and districts. 
Each one of you who has, ha, currently has an NDR dedicated partner to consult with on a regular basis as you need, re need resources to grow and thrive. We'll be in touch soon and don't hesitate to reach out to me in the meantime. Really again, thanks for your time. We're glad you could join us and good luck. Thank you, Chris. And uh, thank you to everybody who took the time to join us this afternoon. Uh, we will be in touch soon.